seat, I'm going to tell you why you're not ready. One is you keep on testing God. Two is you're not diligent. You're not putting effort into life. Three is that you, you're letting everybody else define your good and not good and not God your good. But look at verse 19. To cast out all thy enemies from before thee as the Lord has spoken. You're still surprised at the cast out. Pastor, what do you mean by that? I'm saying that you're not ready because you still have some things and some people in your life that's an enemy to you. In other words, you're sleeping with the enemy. In other words, you've got enemies all around your camp. And not only around your camp, but you opened the door and allowed your enemies to come in and reside with you. But I came to serve notice on you this morning, church, that you can't honestly and truly be blessed by God when you've got so much mess in your life. What's the use of God giving you something good if you're just going to mess it up and tear it up? And you know, there's some things that we uh, want to give our kids, but we got sense enough to know not to give it to them until they've matured enough to recognize what good is and so that they can handle it. I have a ring on my finger. If I was to give it to my grandson, he doesn't care. He would throw it away. As a matter of fact, it's to my understanding that my mother-in-law gave one of our grandchildren a, 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 a bill the other day because it was their birthday. And so she gave them a $5 bill. But the child said, thank you for this dollar. Because the child could not recognize the difference between a dollar and a $5 bill. And so my mother-in-law, being the good person that she is, gave them a $5 bill. You know how I am. I would have said, well, baby, let me exchange that. I would have taken that $5 bill and gave them a dollar bill. And so that's what's happening with some of us. We're looking at God. He gave us a five, but we don't have sense enough to recognize it. And so he's taking it back, giving us a dollar because we're not smart enough to recognize what we got. We don't know what we need to get rid of, and we don't know what we need to keep. There's some people in your life that don't mean you no good. You think they're your friends, but they don't like you. They talk about you behind you. to the folk that are still going through. 
Living the healing got too sophisticated to praise God. Y'all nice padded pews in your glass sanctuary. Don't get too sanctified. Don't get too uppity to praise God. So what if y'all driving Benz and Lexus? You still need to praise God because that's why you here. Don't forget. Don't be so sophisticated that we can't praise God. And just thank him for being God and for who he is. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 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 I'm trying to quit. Thank you, Lord. He's just so good. Sometimes we can't quit because he didn't quit on us. Thank you, There may be some questions this morning. I got time for two and a half. <laughs> I start with last week's question. There was a question last week. <coughs> David, check my pocket, see if my phone is in there. There was a question last week that I found after leaving. It was a text. It was text to me. Somebody asked the question, is it illegal to buy food stamps? Brother Curry, go to the next slide. <clears throat> Purchasing or selling food stamps is illegal. <laughs> food stamp fraud, known as food stamp trafficking, involves the illegal buying or selling of food stamp benefits for cash, drugs, weapons, or other items of value. Unlawful possession or use of food stamp benefits in an amount of $100 or more is a felony. Less than $100 is a misdemeanor under the U.S. Federal Food Stamp Act. <laughs> so I hope that answers your middle class. I'm buying more groceries than I can afford to sell. Amen? Make them feel better. 
But then I was teaching, and you probably remember when I was teaching Exodus, and we were talking about Moses. And I started recognizing deep in one problem that Moses kept on begging God to lead people that God said he needed to take. God said any number of times, especially in the core rebellion, I'm going to take these folk. I'm going to get rid of these folk. And Moses kept saying, no, Lord, leave them. No, Lord, leave them. And after I read that and after I really allowed that to, to sink in, I said, Lord, even if it hurts, those folk that you think you need to take and separate from the ministry and from this church, Lord, my hands are off. And so that's why I love you real good, but if the Lord is trying to move you, I'm not going to keep on trying to make it comfortable for you. And so that's what has to happen in our life. we got to get to a place where when God is trying to move something out of our life, relationships, family, whatever, we need to let him do that and stop trying to hang on for our own egos and for our own feelings. And, oh, I, I, I just, I think I'll miss him. And I'll, so what? Let God do what God is doing. And let him separate your enemies out of your life. It's okay. Anybody else? Another question? Got time for one, one more. <laughs>